It is Monday morning and I am coming home from my CrossFit class and getting the day started by heading out and getting some chores done. This video is going to take on more of a vlog style as I go through our week and show you the lunches we prepared. What are you doing in my front yard? Dad is going to be so mad. I guess I can just tell him that I got a weed and feed for the lawn. Oh man. No, you may not bring that into the house. No. No, it's dirty. Yeah, yeah it is. I think that's dirty. Yeah, it is dirty. <laughs> You gotta keep it outside. All right, Cricky looks like he's hungry. Ow, ow, ow. It can't be on the porch. All right, I'm gonna go feed him. My husband was able to get this sea container set into place for me so we can move all of the grain from the old bank barn, which you've probably seen me working out of before, and I can get all that grain moved up into this sea container. Because we sometimes have rodent problems, whether it be raccoons or rats or mice, they'll get into this grain. So I get these totes from the grain mill and then I transfer all that grain bucket by bucket into these metal trash cans that we have. And so I would store the grain in there. Well, it became extremely labor intensive. And so I found that for me, it was a lot easier just to have Chris take the skid steer and load the pallet with the totes of grain directly in the sea container. I can lock the sea container doors and we don't have the uh, rodent issues that we were having in the bank barn. So this is a much better solution for our grain storage. After feeding, Gemma helped me milk the cow. She's really been taking an interest in wanting to milk and so she's been helping me and Daisy gave us a good amount today. So this is our Monday lunch. I have started asking the older girls to help pitch in with some meals. And since Jordan, my oldest, works in the evenings, she has decided to help me with some lunches. So today she is making us a delicious sesame chicken. And this is the process on how to make that. So first she starts with the egg mixture. She's just beating up some eggs, adding in some salt and pepper to taste. Then in the second bowl, she mixes up some flour and cornstarch or arrowroot powder. We use the arrowroot powder instead. The next step is making the sauce, which is honey, soy sauce, which we are using liquid aminos, ketchup, and stirring that together really well, adding in some brown sugar. and then a little bit of rice vinegar and garlic powder, and then also adding in some oil, which we are using pork lard here. Then mixing it together really good. Then adding in some more arrowroot powder to thicken the sauce up a little bit. Next, she is chopping up the chicken into bite-sized chunks for frying. Okay. 
then the battering process of dipping the chicken chunks into the egg mixture, then transferring them over into the flour mixture, and then setting them aside, waiting to be fried. We always deep fry our foods in either coconut oil or pork lard as they are a much more stable fat for high heat situations. Today we are deep frying this chicken in coconut oil. Um, it just kind of tasted good with the sesame chicken, the sweetened kind of tartness of the sesame chicken. The coconut oil was really delicious. Use your fingers and get it out. No. Ew, get out of here. I can't possibly be the only parent who is constantly reminding your kids to wash their hands. My parents recently went down to the Florida Keys to go on a camping trip. They do some fun tent camping trips. And so they brought us back some cacao pods so we are going to attempt to make some chocolate this week. And the first step is just opening the pods and taking those seeds out and spreading them out and letting them dry and ferment for a few days. It is now time for Crickenburger to get off the porch and be a real sheep. I have cleaned up way too many piles of poop and the porch is starting to smell like pee, which is so disgusting. Every time we open the door, he comes running into the house, pees and poops all in the house. And you know what? The first couple weeks, it was cute and it's not anymore. I mean, yeah, we're done. We're done. You're a big boy now. So we'll see how long this lasts. Bye. See you later, alligator. No. How did you get out? Oh, no. Come on. Let's go. Come on, let's go. You kind of break my heart, little buddy. You kind of break my heart. Okay, actually, I'm kind of mad. What are you doing? My next lunch for this week is a simple pasta and meat sauce. We don't eat pasta a ton, I would say maybe once a week, and so most of the time I try to keep that for a lunch meal because it's really quick. So I pulled out some beef sausage that we had from our cows and am browning that up, adding that to the sauce that we have from our tomatoes from last year's garden, and trying to make a hearty pasta and meat sauce for lunch. Lunch is probably one of the most difficult meals for me to get into because it's in the middle of the day and I need something quick. I want to be in and out. I do try to prepare extras for dinner, so some days we can have leftovers for lunch, but that's always difficult to judge how much will actually be left over from dinner.
Today, my 13 year old is in the kitchen making chocolate chip cookies. So I am kicked out into the dining room and I'm going to make a simple lunch out here. All right, and Wednesday's lunch is a tuna salad. I am mixing the tuna today with a plain Greek yogurt. Sometimes we'll use mayonnaise, sometimes we'll use yogurt. It just depends on what I have in the refrigerator, what I have made up. So today it is the yogurt and we are going to be using tortillas, uh, like little tortilla chips to scoop it up with and eat it that way. As a mom, sometimes I'm just busy and not paying attention to my children who are right next to me. So it's been really adorable going back and watching some of this video footage and seeing my kids and what they're doing when I'm not completely paying attention to them. Um, so it's just, it makes me cry when I watch how cute they are and how quickly they're growing up and their little personalities. So I'm adding some bread and butter pickles that we made from our cucumbers last year. And Shay apparently does not like pickles. Yummy. Yummy. Do we need to go get chips from now? Yeah, would you mind grabbing some tortilla chips? You like it? It's <laughs> getting chips. You don't like pickles. Shay. I don't like pickles. I like pickles. I ate these. Oh! Oh goodness, oh goodness. And here are the delicious chocolate chip cookies. Well, what is trying to get lunch started without finding an animal needing help? We have our ram lamb that somehow got stuck in the round bale holder. So I'm gonna go save him. The bull there just to my left he is super sweet. He has never given me any reason to be afraid of him. However, I do always make sure that I have an eye on him, even if it's just my peripheral vision, because you never know at what point a nice bull or a nice ram will turn around and nail you. So um, even though, like I said, he's, he's always been very sweet to me, I am very cautious and always make sure to have a stick with me just in case I need to defend myself. Today's lunch, I did not even film us making. It was a simple ground beef that I browned up, put some taco seasoning on, laid it over a tray of tortilla chips, melted some cheese on, and then we had served with some sour cream. It was a quick meal. We had to get in and out because we ended up spending several hours out, on the, out in the garden. It was a beautiful day, so lunch was quick.
kids have decided it would be a great idea to take their shoes, like all their shoes that they own, into their fort with them. Which we all know darn well means they're never making it back to the house. I mean, I think they probably each have six pairs of shoes. So when we're trying to run out the door and go somewhere and I'm hollering, where are your shoes? Someone remind me that they all have them in their fort. And I don't know who grew up eating ramen noodles, but I did. It was a huge staple in my house. And the more I became a little bit more aware of the ingredients that are in things, I saw that the little packets, the season packets that come in with the ramen noodles uh, were really actually quite disgusting and had MSG in it. So when I took that step away from ramen noodles and realized that I did not want to include that in my diet, especially since I was having children and I certainly did not want the kids to be eating something like that, I realized that I can take these rice ramen noodles that I get at Costco. And I know you can get them at other grocery stores as well. This is just the large box bag that would feed our whole family. I would take these ramen noodles, cook them down real good, drain the water all out, add a big old blob of butter, and I use this Redmond Real Salt. And because I would not have the ramen noodles with the broth, I would drain all the water out and just put the seasoned packet in it and the butter and just eat it like that, almost kind of like like pasta, macaroni and cheese, pasta sort of. So I would do this instead, the butter, the real salt seasoning, and it is a much, much better alternative and tastes almost the same and not quite as gross for you. <laughs> well, this was it for a little glimpse into our week this past week. Uh, here we're unloading some old rotten fence boards from the horse fences that we had to take down, and we are going to have a bonfire this weekend. Good job! Yay! All right, so I don't know how many people grew up on ramen noodles with the... 